How's he going to do? Probably not amazing. First off tonight, startling new fallout from a secretly recorded Grand Rapids police line that already exposed a cover-up. A deception that cost the city embarrassment, a lost job, and suspensions. It involved officers trying to get a prosecutor off the hook for a drunken wrong-way crash. But what about the thousands of other calls on that infamous line 3407? Tonight, our Target 8 team is uncovering why we'll never hear them. The city purged the line, deleted everything, despite our legal request to save them. Target 8 investigators Ken Kolker and Heather Walker obtained internal emails and tracked down key players to piece together what happened. And then they followed the trail all the way to top Grand Rapids city leaders. We broke the story first today online, and now Heather Walker is live with what they discovered. Well, Sue and Brian, city email showed the police department, city attorney, and the city manager all took part in purging the secretly recorded calls to and from line 3407. Who ordered to purge the calls? You, you should talk to the city attorney's office because uh, this was a legal matter. In Come see me this afternoon. You've got to wonder what is so damaging that was on those recordings that the city had people had it had to destroy them. Line 3407. Together. Prior to then assistant prosecutor Josh Kuyper's run-in with the law in 2016, we had never heard of it. But that night revealed the mystery line in the command office at GRPD, a line police thought was unrecorded. Once exposed, we wondered what else the line was hiding. Sobriety, how's he going to do? Target 8 and the ACLU filed Freedom of Information Act requests to find out. We wanted to see what else had been recorded on this line to understand whether there might be other incidents. We were in the ACLU put in a request for all recordings made at any time on police line 3407. We thought that there would be hundreds of hours of recording. But the city responded with only 20 minutes of recordings it had already released. Nothing new. All right, I'll do what I can. The ACLU also put in a request for internal emails about the line. They showed the city started purging the calls on May 27th of this year, immediately after winning the last court fight over the recordings. But we learned that didn't mean the recordings were gone. The city's former IT director told Target 8 off camera that even though his department had purged the police servers, the calls were still on city backups. Two days after the purge started, an assistant city manager emailed the IT director asking for an update. Since these reside on a city server, these records are recoverable for 14 days within backups. The city's former IT director told Target 8 that the backups were kept here at Switch's massive data center in Kentwood. Before the 14 days were up, both Target 8 and the ACLU had filed separate requests for the recordings. The former IT director said that he was never asked by the city attorney to recover the recordings. Despite his email about that 14-day backup, the recordings disappeared forever. And so that's the violation? Yes, that's a violation. But I do think that a, a court would find that email um, raises questions about whether or not this was done deliberately you know, and intentionally. At Target 8's request, the Michigan Press Association's attorney reviewed the city emails. I think that it is... Um, an unusual case. I, I would I would agree with that. And um, it raises questions that I, I think need to be answered. The ACLU's Miriam Aukerman says that she had planned to pick the dates of high profile incidents and listen to see if police use the secretly recorded line. Okay. Now she wants to know who in the city pushed for the purge. So the first step here really is for the city to explain to the community what happened here, why was this information destroyed, on whose recommendation, by whose orders and what was on those recordings that they were so afraid that the public would hear. City Manager Mark Washington is listed as a recipient of some of the emails and also sent one message about the purge. But the city redacted the subject line and most of the text from that email. He told Target 8 that the city attorney was responsible for the purge. 
It was a legal matter, and the decisions that occurred regarding that was a result of the city attorney's office and uh, the city attorney's decision, and I would suggest you talk to her. So there are some who think that's a violation of, of FOIA. If we file a FOIA, the stuff is still recoverable, and the FOIA is basically not honored. And that is a legal question that the city attorney will have to, have to address for the public. But I need to know why it was purged. Because um, we have a retention period, okay. a state authorized retention period. We okay. just followed the retention schedule. What? I okay. gotta go on. The city attorney refused to answer any other question. Why should people of Grand Rapids care about this? I think if you care about police accountability, if you care about open government, you should care about this. In an email to Target 8, the city attorney said the city could not legally release the calls because the federal judge ruled the city had recorded them inadvertently. However, the judge's ruling appears to contradict that and says nothing about the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, so Heather, can, what's next? Well, there's a couple of things. So the ACLU attorney says she's still considering her legal options, right? They could take some type of legal uh, step there. She, and she's the one that called in the city to find out who called for the purge um, to release those unredacted emails. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it is a matter of open government. Right. And the Michigan Press Association attorney says she's never dealt with a case like this. So she says there's really little recourse because those recordings have already been, you know, erased. But she said there could be like a civil... Um, case that could lead to a fine. And now, uh, obviously, we're going to continue yeah. to cover this story. Right. Of course, the worst part of this is that we will never know what's on those calls no. because they're gone. We can only speculate now. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thank you, Heather, Ken.